Inspired by the life of the savvy and ambitious Colombian businesswoman Griselda Blanco comes a new Netflix original limited series. Griselda tells the story of a devoted mother who, with her lethal blend of charm and relentless savagery, creates one of the most powerful cartels in history. Witness Sofia Vergara's captivating transformation into the godmother of the underworld. Griselda, now streaming only on Netflix. Listen to the 48 Hours podcast for shocking murder cases and compelling real-life dramas from one of television's most watched true crime shows. Go behind the scenes of each episode with award-winning CBS News correspondents and producers in Postmortem, a weekly deep dive. Listen to 48 Hours wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome to the Bare Naked ABCs, where we discuss every Bare Naked Lady song from 7 to Y, no matter how spaced out that song might be. Joining me tonight, I have a guy that I think is out of this world. Welcome to Jeff. Hi, everyone. And unfortunately, tonight we don't have Aaron or Stefan. They spaced out on us. But they'll be joining us with some some of their thoughts throughout the show that I will enter in. But we do have a guest tonight. We have Jimmy. Do you go by Jim or Jimmy? Jimmy Custis. uh, A a filmmaker, actor, uh, writer of a film out, uh, Body Swap at bodyswapmovie.com so that's where people can go to see this movie yes yes it's about a uh slob that trades places with a career-minded businesswoman and so it's like the typical romantic comedy meets a body swap comedy. oh sounds like a nice mishmash sorry jimmy did you you said bodyswap.com b-o-d-y-s-w-a-p uh, b-o-d-y-s-w-a-p movie Oh, I'm sorry. Com. I apologize. Yeah, I just tried to no. pull it on here. So. <laughs> Don't go to bodyswap.com. That might get you a completely different yeah, type of thing. That's a whole other thing. <laughs> bodyswapmovie.com. <laughs> Who knows what's out there? Oh, wow. This has been to all the festivals. Check this out. <laughs> How many festivals? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It mo- I moved up to quite a few festivals. It was that played at a city in Michigan, northern Michigan. We have no connection in northern Michigan with 9,000 people. It's wow. like a, a, that that town only has 9,000 people. Then it moved up into a New Mexico town that uh, got nominated for award. Then it won at the Louisville Film Festival, wow. which is our hometown anyway. And But then we got into Peachtree, which is an Oscar, uh, cal- uh, Oscar qualifying festival. And we won the best picture there again. Wow. And then we got into Houston, which was the 53 years running mm-hmm. festival. And that's like, along with New York and San Francisco, three of the oldest running film festivals. And then we got in the 29th. We got some nominations and wins there for wow. some uh, awards and acting. And, uh, and then we got into the 29th Woods Hall. And they wanted us for an encore. That was uh, digitally because of uh, COVID. Houston got canceled, but they let us know the awards we won. Oh, that was good. But we got in before COVID, and then it got canceled. It was like going to be in April. But uh, it moved up the ladder, and most movies don't do that. So that was great news. Yeah, that's us. amazing. Yeah. Very Congratulations. Cool. Mm-hmm. Now, how big a cast do you have in this film? Oh, I'd say about 40 speaking parts and maybe like a 40 more extras that we carefully place into the... Uh, background wow that's a good good cast yeah i want to know how to more carefully place extras learn uh i learned from a small crew and small pool of extras what to do now that covid's around and i can do a movie i was going to do one in september but uh didn't have the budget if i had the budget i had some budget but then more costs propped up because of covid so i said i'll wait on that and Mm -hmm. um so Go support Body Swap Movie, and uh, maybe I can make another one. Yeah, definitely. (laughs) We will definitely be supporting that. Everyone go out and watch this movie. So can this be watched on? Now this took us over to the site. It looks like a Vimeo site. Can we watch the movie on this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You buy it on there. And um, right now it's virtual cinema pricing. So, like, that's the only place you can see it in virtual cinema uh, with the – 
shutdowns, um, theaters now do we now do the virtual release, and it's like a it's the price of a movie ticket, but you know you can have two people watching it and get a little bit of a discount. And uh, obviously, if it was like Mulan, you'd be charging like thirty five dollars. <laughs> and then when it's on Amazon, iTunes, all that, that'll be a little bit later, December or January. I'm not sure. Um, just depends on. Uh, it's got to go through this quality control process we're working right, on right now okay. to do that. Of course. Well, we're really glad to have you, and, and we'll talk more about the movie a little bit later, but kind of staying on theme of, of science fiction, we're going to discuss a kind of science fiction-y type song tonight in Is Somebody Singing? So this isn't on mm-hmm. any particular albums. It was a re- internet release only. So for people who haven't heard this song before, here is a quick snippet. Push back in my seat. Look out my window. Here it comes home. What once was fueled by fear now has 15 nations orbiting together here. So, uh, first of all, the only way you're going to hear this is to go online, if you haven't already done so, and see the video of when this was done live. Um, So, that was done February 8th in 2013. It was aired on CBC Radio on the program Q, which BNL has been on multiple times, as have Stephen Page. And it was released by CBC Music Online. You can only get it through CBC Music Online if you're going to purchase it. You can't go through iTunes or anything or Amazon or anything like that. Um, and I, I'm going to break this down in a minute and, and really kind of get into some details. But before I get too boring, are there any major things that you guys want to talk about with this song? Um, I would say this is the most Canadian thing to ever exist. Uh, you got the Canadian astronaut um, out in space. Mm-hmm. Chris Hatfield, you know, lead singer Ed Robertson, and then, uh, you know, on a Canadian channel, a uh, TV channel, and it's just uh, very Canadian. Yeah, if you haven't seen this video, it's just really a, a, a one-of-a-kind thing. That's the first time they've done it in uh, a space duet or a space... Music, I yep. don't know. Um, so it's not the first uh, time that there's been a space a space musical or where they've done where someone's done something from Earth and from space at the same time. But this is the first duet of new music performed sim- simultaneously in space and on the ground. So this is the first new song that was written specifically for mm-hmm. this and first time performed. And it's got to be the first time it was two Canadians, right? Um, mm-hmm. oh, hold on one moment. Uh oh. Well, you're gonna tell me there was an Ann Murray, Justin I'm Bieber, a Canadian astronaut. Oh, this astronaut's the first Canadian to walk on the moon, too. I've been looking up stuff about him, too. Uh, so, so <laughs> April 2011, a NASA astronaut collaborated with Jethro Tull's Ian Anderson on the ground oh. to play the band song Bore. Okay. Over the satellite connection, so I think because a NASA astronaut, I would say that that's a, an American. And Jethro Tull, if I remember correctly, is Canadian, or at least I believe Ian Anderson is. So that's a, that's a different countries first Canadian right, collaboration. Right. <laughs> Knowing Jethro Tull is probably forty minutes long. <laughs> probably. <laughs> Space launches take less time than a Jethro Tull song. <laughs> he was up there, but he didn't. He played it while coming down. Yeah, they they launched, orbited, and then came back down. By the time "Thick as a Brick" was over, yeah, while there was still a solo going on. That's right. <laughs> they were still. Hold solo. on a second, you guys go with your solo. I gotta land this thing. <laughs> yeah, Apollo thirteen, like. Uh, uh, had uh, malfunctions fixed them and came back. <laughs> so <laughs> meanwhile, <laughs> so you said you did a little bit and of I, research on Chris Hatfield. I don't want to bore people by hearing my voice all night. What did you learn about Chris Hatfield? Oh well, if you look on there, there's a bunch of videos. While looking at that video, they'll recommend videos of him doing like Wired 
asking uh, the ask him space questions. I I knew most of the space answers. Um, I think there's another one I didn't get a chance to look at. Um, and I looked at his Wikipedia, and uh, that's how, that's the extent of everything. Uh, the amount of information you can get in a short amount of time nowadays is <laughs> great to have. I also pulled up like for example in in the appearances that we'll be talking about later tonight, he was interviewed while he was in space by Captain Kirk himself. And they have that interview up there with, I keep thinking James T. Kirk. I'm like, no, William Shatner. Come on, get this right. Um, (laughs) The other Canadian. Kentucky boy. I'm from Kentucky. Oh, Kentucky. That's right. Sorry. I was thinking of the other Canadians Mm -hmm. that were on the show. (laughs) And then, of course. He he gives off a Canadian vibe, though. (laughs) Um, and then also Chris Hatfield covered Major Tom while he was in space. Um, he actually wrote a whole album and recorded a whole album while he was up in space. Yeah, I saw that. I didn't watch that video, but I saw that and was kind of interested. But I don't want to get bogged down with... I've heard Space Odyssey. Oh, yeah. So. I've, I went through it. <laughs> I didn't want to judge it against the song. You know? I went through the whole um, album last night. I would say Canadian folk and country is the best way to to uh express what this what his album sounds like go ahead i think it's also important by the way too um just so we don't get any angry fan mail or anything to point out that nasa you can be um uh you don't have to be american to be a nasa in fact uh chris was actually the director of operations at nasa he was i i just looked that up yes so so that wasn't even technical too but yeah yeah he actually was officially working for nasa and was uh uh, do yeah i don't know much about the space programs and how they work and if uh because i I saw he had an insignia on there i didn't know what it was but uh and whether he was for worked for them or they canada Canada had their own yeah i wasn't sure it's kind of hard to have a space program compared to like a military (laughs) everyone has a military but like space programs a bit (laughs) complicated unless you're russia or united states uh, well, and that yeah. kind of makes sense um, too, because so I, I one of the things I found when researching him this week was how he and Ed actually first came to meet each other. Um, because Stefan asked me when I was recording his part last night, he's like, "Well, how do these guys know each other?" Even I'm like, "Hmm, excellent question." And of course, then I went down the rabbit hole. Um, <laughs> so Hadfield was actually. Uh, first approached the band when he was stationed at NASA Mission Control in Houston, and BNL was touring the southern U.S. at that point, and Hatfield reached out to BNL and gave them a tour of Mission Control in Houston. Um, and while he was doing that, he and Ed just like really hit it off, like they they like were first time friends immediately. Um, and then. Like, they just, like, had so many things in common, like flying planes and all these other things. Like, But, for example, flying planes, finishing old trucks, performing music. Um, and so they just got really, really close together. Um, and then Hadfield approached B&L when he knew he was going to be going up and becoming this, the commander of the International mm-hmm. Space Station. He's like, here's an opportunity. I want to do this thing. And I want you guys to do this. And so he approached BNL and said, I, "Let's let's co-write a song." And they co-wrote this song while Hadfield was actually training over in Russia for five months for this mission, and then like practicing it while he was going up into space. So also, the song was actually written before he went up to the ISS. Also written while he was there. Like they continued collaborating while he was up there, um, and then finished it up while I was up there and then created all this background of like, they have the Wexford. I'm going to get the name wrong. The Wexford Mm -hmm. Gleeks, which is a, is Wexford collegiate school for the arts choral program. Um, That's who is doing all the background harmonies. Um, And Mm -hmm. so I believe I would have to say that Ed probably or, or CBC brought them in. Um, And, and, decided to kind of do this right there on the station and, and have that collaboration. And as much as I like to see that version, the version that they did live, cause that's, that's awesome. Let's be honest. Yeah. He's doing a duet from the ISS. That's, that's amazing. The choral was great. I also really enjoyed watching the one they did may of this year during quarantine. 
so where it's basically jam. just a Zoom call, and and um, now Chris is retired, so he's at home and uh, chilling out. Um, I would recommend watching both versions because there's something to love in both of them. Mm-hmm. I like the. Go the, ahead. The youth choir, I think, added a, a adds a special. Everyone seems to be very happy doing this. I like seeing all the smiles and like they're having a, the time of their lives. It feels like mm-hmm. um, I totally doing agree. Doing a special uh, performance, so I do like uh, I do like seeing that and um, uh, just a, a thought. Yeah, no, I mean Ed is smiling all over the place while he's doing this. He's having a grand old time. And the the choir is really stoic mm-hmm. at first, but as soon as they start seeing, you can see they're having fun as well. And Chris is just having a great time. We don't get to. Here's the thing about that video, though, we don't get to hear or see BNL the other BNL boys playing that much. No, it, you see, you kind of see Tyler's head occasionally. Yeah. <laughs> you, get, you get the over the over the head shot of Tyler and the drums, but yeah, yeah, and, yeah, and it, you get, it feels like a head song more than anything, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. I didn't. I didn't even think. I thought it just counted. It. I didn't. Really, did not until you said that. Knew it was a B and L song. I thought it was uh, the 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 lead singer. Yeah, that was and that was the. Connection. I agree. When I when I watch um, that version, it's like it doesn't feel necessarily B and L until you watch uh-uh. the May one where they're all together and performing. Right. Well, and they did one. And also, I mean, it does have a. Um, he sounds the most Michael Stipe, <laughs> REM. Mm-hmm. He could possibly yeah. sound if you didn't know it was him, you'd think yeah, it was all Yeah, I didn't think about he that. That's very... a good point. Right. Mm-hmm. And one of the things I don't know if you guys saw this version too uh, that was on the web, but a couple months later, when when Chris actually returned to Earth, just for Canada Day, they did a big concert as well, and it's just Ed and and uh, Chris on stage for Canada Day. They don't have any of the rest of BNL with them. They have a big right. choral in the background, but they don't have any of the rest of BNL. And I was like, "Oh, what a missed opportunity!" <laughs> but I, I agree with you, Jeff, about that selfie cam jam that they did this year. I like the fact that you can hear the that you can hear the guys singing harmonies. You can hear right Jim. You can hear Tyler. You can hear. Kevin and even and- even in that one, I loved it too because when Chris comes in on his first harm on the pre-chorus, uh, when Chris comes in, like his eyes light up, like here I go, I'm coming in on these harms, <laughs> and the harms between Chris and Ed are really solid and really, and, and I know Jim's doing harms on that too, but um, you know they but you sound, can tell which they one's sound Chris. really good, and I, I there's um, uh, you know I I think as much as I, I'm a sucker for a choral, I'm you know a big choral uh, a chorus going on there. And so I do like the live version, but I had a lot of fun watching that uh, the selfie jam mm. between them. And then plus uh, there again too, you get to see the rest of the band, you know, jamming out on the song as well. By the way, if people don't know who Chris Hadfield is, um, first of all, you're obviously not Canadian. Um, second of all, because he's a Canadian phenomenon, um, but he was the first Canadian to walk in space. He also visited the the Russian Mir space station. He's the first Canadian commander of the ISS. Um, he chronicled his life while he was on board the space station by taking pictures of the Earth from the space station and sending it over social media and became really well known for that. Um, he also recorded his first spa- song in space, song Jewel, of- Jewel in the Night, um, which he recorded on Christmas Eve in 2012. Um, as well as Space Oddity, covering Space Oddity for David Bowie, um, which has over 45 million views there. So, I mean, if, if you don't know who Chris Hatfield is, he he really is a Canadian personality more than anything else. I mean, here's a guy who can sing, play guitar, and is literally a rocket scientist. Yeah. If he didn't get enough women before, now he... <laughs> He, he, as an astronaut, he gets to be a musician as well. Like, <laughs> if, you, if you can't get a date with that story in a bar, I'm like, you know, playing your guitar, singing a song. And oh, by the way, I was on the ISS. You know? uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I headed up the International Space yeah. Station. Yeah. 
I'm a singing astronaut. That officially makes him cooler <laughs> than many of us will ever be. <laughs> oh, yeah. And probably flew fighter planes like all... I think he probably did. I mean, uh, every astronaut did. Yeah, no, he did. So. He was a fighter player, uh, fighter pilot before he joined the astronaut program. So that not only is he an astronaut, he can also f- fly fighter jets and supposedly fix old trucks. Like this, this guy can do everything. I love the backdrop. If we do, you put these out on like YouTube or anything, or are we just doing? <laughs> no, a just do a Zoom call. Yeah. We, we, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's got. If you had, if you well, this is a podcast, but if you see the uh, uh, what's going on, he's got a space mm-hmm. background on the Zoom call we're doing for it. And full disclosure, if you look at Jimmy's background, he's clearly on the ISS right now as we speak. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yes, they actually just. Uh, Dress it like with walls and um, <laughs> like anything else. <laughs> I, I um, thought that I'm the background was use a lot room. of drywall. I thought the background was apropos yeah. for the night. Yes, it so. looks good. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do have to say, my favorite comment on the YouTube page is Chris Hadfield has a better internet connection than me. <laughs> <laughs> and I, and yeah, can't get given, a Zoom call to work, and he's up in the ISS. <laughs> I was going to say this is yeah. 2013. We have a hard time with Zoom connections yeah. in 2000 right. in 2020, and he here he is like <laughs> they, we still haven't figured out how to do a Zoom music. No buffering at all in that video. How is that no? <laughs> they were perfectly synced. NASA was using up all the satellites that day. I'm curious about that, too, because if you've ever tried to sing or do a duo with someone over Zoom, it is impossible. I'd love to know how they did that. I did a podcast yesterday, and my video was lagging totally behind um, the yeah the audio. <laughs> I, I couldn't look at yeah. myself. I had to look at the other oh, yeah. people. And, and, it's, and you can tell in watching it that it's not like Chris recorded this beforehand, because beforehand you have banter between Ed and Chris. Right. Which, great banter. I love watching Ed banter with anyone, and Chris just gives it back just as much as Ed does, which is wonderful. Mm. It's almost like watching Chris, uh, like watching Ed and Steve on stage again. Speaking of the that, I mean, we could do this with everything post-Steven, but the trouble with Tracy this week is I, I really do miss Steven in this song. Um, but, you know, I could use that for every single... Every single one that we have from when Stephen le- left. So, Anything after Stephen left, yeah. yeah. That makes sense. Um, so I guess the real trouble tr- with Tracy this week would probably have to be that I, I, like you had said with that video when we mentioned it earlier, with the CBC one that was done out there, they... <sighs> I miss the guys. Like you, it, you don't get the feeling of it's a BNL and Chris. You get the feeling of it's Ed and Chris and and this, uh, and the band and the Youth geek choir. and the and the choral are extras to right. add in, but it's really Ed and Chris. And it feels like an Ed song. I mean, it definitely feels like an Ed written oh. song. And 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 in that case, it works. But yeah, I I agree. It would be nice to see it as BNL with. Chris Hadfield, you know, instead of just Ed and Chris Hadfield. <clears throat> well, while we're talking about the lyrics, let's talk about the lyrics. Let's talk about the meanings of this song. It's about space. <laughs> it's about space. <laughs> <laughs> Wrap that up. <laughs> That's actually what most people would say, though. Like, they would be like, they would look on the surface level and say, yeah, it's a, it's, they make a bunch of puns about space and about mm-hmm. the space station. But I, it's a lot deeper. I do wonder what the sound of, off the moon thing because there is no sound in space so i wondered what that line meant trying to find it i have it here i mean i i like um i like the allegorical feel of it uh building into it I mean, yeah so i so so sing your song i'm listening out where the stars are glistening i can hear your voices i mean i like that feeling that i mean it's got to be lonely really lonely being on the iss yeah and so that whole idea that if all of you down there are singing, I'm going to hear you. You know, that's our connection mm-hmm. right there. And I, I, I like that sentiment. 
But yes, yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. yes, physically you speaking. You can't hear there, sound in space, but yeah. <laughs> Art doesn't need to make sense, movie director. Yeah. I would. S- There's a lot of. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. If I had to guess, I, my guess is Ed wrote that. Musicians line. get that luxury. Filmmakers do not. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, where did that cup go from one shot to the next? Right. I want to know. <laughs> Don't make any Easter egg problems at all throughout the whole movie. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Surprisingly, you can get away with them. Not changing like a shirt. If the shirt's a different color, but it looks the same, it works. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> For Con, what do you mean? Some things they don't catch. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, oh, I was just watching. This is totally off subject, but I was watching a cool video. I'm a horror movie buff, um, as most people mm-hmm. know. And I, I was watching a, a Mistakes from the original Halloween 78. And I never noticed that if you're watching the closet scene when Michael Myers is attacking you know, Jamie Lee Curtis the shirt actually changes like three times during that sequence. And I never <laughs> noticed that before. I'm like, that's pretty cool. You're too busy watching the, yeah. the, uh, yeah. the rest of the scene. So yeah, this, so this song isn't just about space though. Like the song is even deeper. Like it's about a person that's, that's missing his loved ones that are down on earth, but it's also really about the, human experience and and seeing beyond national borders and seeing beyond all these differences in in humanity that are insignificant and unimportant when you're seeing the planet from space. Um, As Chris said, like it's in that line in the chorus. If you are sorry, it was a Chris. Yeah, it was Chris. Uh, If you could see our nation from the international space station, like that really gave him a hard time because it's a hard line to say. Um, Mm -hmm. And, and it's like, no, we, we've got to keep that because even if you change it and and they thought about changing it to, um, they thought about changing it to a different line and and robertson's like no we we gotta keep it because of where you are and we do need to make that apparent and and you know people will love that even though it's hard to sing um yeah go ahead sometimes you don't like putting monosyllabic words in a lyric or <laughs> stuff like that yeah that's the truth <laughs> it's a little bit of a hard word to say but I mean, and when I first heard the song, I, I fir- my first initial instinct was, <laughs> "That's kind of that's kind of hokey." But um, but it, the, the more I listened to it, I played it back, and I really put myself into perspective of it. Um, because <clears throat> this song definitely reminds me, and I'm sure other people of other songs, you know, Rocket Man and and Major Tom and and those types of songs, and uh, Major or Major Tom coming home. Um, so, you know, you get that vibe from from all of that. And the listening back to it, if you really put yourself in the perspective of someone that's up on the ISS, it really does sell. And I do love that line. Um, yeah. Um, the line was, uh, I don't know. <laughs> he walked away from the camera, so I had to, like, fill in the... Gaps it's all good. Keep going. Uh, keep rolling. <laughs> but, <laughs> oh, I'm a director. But yeah, Just keep uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, keep rolling. Uh, I was going to say something about the other line that I liked was the. Uh, well, I like the two. There's sort of like two lines that like bookend where he's like talking about the uh, coming. But it's also where I'm coming from and where I'm going to. And that's kind of like a yeah duh right yeah <laughs> like yeah, your house yeah. is also but in the like like you said in the poetry and the art type of way you can draw deeper deeper meaning in like simpler yeah. lines and the housing everybody anybody ever knew or something I don't no know that's actually my one favorite one the song the one that goes yeah, that yeah. that brilliant fall of blue houses every anybody everybody knew and that line I I really like that. Um, because again, like you said, a lot of these lines are very just duh, obvious lines. But then, if you put yourself in in the context of the character, it's like, oh yeah, yeah, that that's that's true. You know, um, this one definitely forces you if you want to really get the emotional impact, you got to step into the shoes, the astronaut shoes of the character, and um, yeah. Which is helpful when they're doing that live version of it because yeah. Chris is singing it from space, and so you really can see because he sings it from the cupola, he, he's singing it from there, and you're looking out the window yeah, behind him yeah, at right. Earth. 
So, it, so go ahead. So for like me, the guest, I f- found out this song when you gave me a, a, a I was approaching different podcasts um, promoting this movie, and I got a list of songs and said which song you know you like coming up, and I really like this one, and it felt uh, appropriate. Um, but when was the first? So the first time I heard it was you know when I see this list and go check out the different songs and which one I wanted to talk about on the podcast. But when did you first hear this song? I didn't first hear this song. I don't know about you, Jeff, but I didn't first hear of it when it came out in 2013. I didn't hear about it until probably 2018, no, 2017, when I started researching for the list to come up with for songs for this podcast. And and little gems like this one popped up, and I'm like, oh my God, that thing's amazing. I got to bring that up. That that one's going to be a weekly episode right there. Yes, that's it. That does remind me, of, and I'll let you talk in a second, Jeff. But like, <laughs> that reminds me of when I would look up Beck. Well, I would look up Beck songs way back when, and like find all these songs that he did that you never that never made it to albums. He's done so many different types right. of one offs. Um, so I'm sure that's what it was like. Uh, but yeah, you can go on, Jeff. No, 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 no. You're the guest. You talk all you want. <laughs> they they hear me every week. <laughs> 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 I gotcha. Um, no, I, I first heard the song, honestly, when Tracy sent it to me. Um, I know a lot of BNL. That's why I'm, I, you know, I wanted to be on the, the show and everything, and I love BNL, but this one was new to me. I didn't, I've never heard of this until I listened to it for this, uh, for this episode. Um, and it was one of those that just, it, it, it hit me in a lot of ways, both, of, both as a songwriter and a lyricist, you know, from the musical side of it. But, you know, I was, I was I was a nerd growing up. I was an absolute nerd. I still am a nerd and love sci-fi and love space movies. And I mean, you're doing a duet with a freaking astronaut, which is I think that's cool. I just I love it. Yeah. And I love seeing the video with him playing the guitar on the ISS. And um, you know, um, just it's kind of funny. I wanted to be an astronaut as a kid, but I'm afraid of heights. <laughs> but in a way, I don't mind like looking at it. Well, I kind of hate looking out airplane windows, but like, it's less scary to be on an airplane to me than like being on a balcony. I hate. <laughs> I know you like feel that. safer. Yeah, in the plane, you're like, ah, yeah, this yeah. is all right. There's stuff around me. And I, I'm six foot five, and all balcony railings are like two yeah. feet. So six I foot just, five. Yeah. So you're like, yeah. I'm gonna go over it. <laughs> in the movie, we play that up uh, because I'm much taller than the actress, of course. Um, she's not short. But she's a woman, so she's going to be, you know, average height for a woman, whatever that is. And uh, so, yeah, we play up the idea that you also swap bodies into, like, this big guy. And I weighed, <laughs> like, 100 pounds more <laughs> back then. So you, uh, you weren't operating the camera, I'm guessing. It wasn't all, like, over the... It wasn't POV oh, over no, the no. Uh, I, I had a director. I had a director. I was producer. We didn't have that type of budget where I couldn't not do stuff on it, but... I luckily didn't have to direct it in that. <laughs> oh, that's good. Because it's hard to do that. <clears throat> yeah. So, what I love... I think what I love about this song is, like, you would think... Like, some of the... A lot of the technical lines were written by Chris. But it's also really still poetic. Even though he's putting numbers in there. Even though he's he's using statistics and stuff. In using them, he's being poetic, and and it's just I, I don't know I. It's the mythbusters of, mu- of music. Yeah, we're learning stuff while listening to this fun. Song. Yeah, like ninety minutes to the moon to moon to sun, a bullet can't go half this fast. Like instead of just like saying like so many miles per minute and stuff like that, like no, like he's giving you the poetic feel of what this is. And I'm like, calling it now. Only... I, I guarantee you, as soon as Chris wrote that line, he got giggly. I guarantee you, he wrote that line down. He's like, oh my God. <laughs> yeah. I can, I can see his face now when he came up with that. Because it is, it is a fun line. I mean, he's dropping some knowledge and on the, And the, uh, and the sun rising... 14 times a year, yeah, that's yeah. a new... 16 uh, times a day, like, that's amazing. Like, within a 24-hour period, you get to see the sunrise 16 times. But he mixes also some things that are, like, the sound <laughs> being in space. <laughs> so, <laughs> if you took it too literally... But, I, uh, I want to yeah, say it's... that was an headline. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> if you don't pay attention to lyrics, this is what this podcast is for: is to make you dissect the lyrics. Most oh, yeah. people don't pay attention to. Them. Oh, oh, oh! We we dissect exactly. No, especially Jeff and I. <laughs> Aaron's usually like the music was amazing. We are in there with our scaffolds. So hard. I would say a couple of years of looking at. Every song <laughs> by Barry Naked Ladies will do that, you know. <laughs> yeah, I'm a bit. I, I've always been that way, though. Anyways, yeah, so. hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've always been. That's I'm, I'm, I'm definitely a lyricist. Uh, guy. How so. many? So how many podcasts? Like I know Weird Al is one where they go A to Z. They just finished up though. Yep. Yeah, have you seen any? They actually oh, finished they up. They Mike it? Hunter, who does that, is oh. a friend of mine. He's uh, they actually just finally finished up their entire series. But yeah, um, I think they did. There's one for uh, because I've always wondered who did it first. I think there was a Beatles one that did it before everybody. Yep, Alphabetical is what this what this one and Weird Alphabet were, yes, were both yeah, based I thought on. There was a Beatles one that did it before. Yeah. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Well, there were podcasts before Ricky Gervais, but he was the one that popularized it. So how about this one popular? Yes, that, I love that <laughs> idea. Um, and there is, of course, they they might be Giants podcasts as well. They might be a podcast. I think. Oh, I can't. They don't remember. go. They don't go alphabetical though, do they? No, they don't go alphabetical. He, he yeah. There's he some that. Some... There's a big Talking Heads one that doesn't. I don't think go alphabetical, but it's a big podcast about the Talking Heads. Go Excellent. through all the Weezer albums by Roy G. Biv. Just go. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. That would make more sense. Jimmy, if you want to start that podcast, I'd gladly cheat on this one, by the way, just so you know. <laughs> okay. All right. Oh, right in front of her? Right, in right front yes. Of her. Yeah. You know, I, I got no scruples. <laughs> it's like that meme where the guy's walking and the girl, if you've ever seen that meme, they took <laughs> oh, a yeah, stock yeah, photo yeah. of this guy and he's like walking and he looks back and they always put something else there. <laughs> I also like the meme where it's like, uh, They'll show a picture of something. They'll say, "I want this," and then they'll say, "We have this at home." And then the they'll show a picture of what that is at home, and it's like a way worse version, yeah, right. kind of like, "Oh yeah, we want McDonald's. <laughs> we got McDonald's at home, or whatever that means." You know. <laughs> I actually use some of those clips in my song about memes. We're allowed to. We're allowed to. Uh, shame oh, that's right. You, you got a song about memes. That is he a good does. segue. I do have a song about yeah. memes. Yeah, I, I shamelessly plug all the time. We're allowed to do that, right? I, oh yeah, yeah, totally. Bodyswapmovie.com. Okay, yeah, sure. Every time I that you do that, I just throw it in there. I throw, I throw a clip line, in there too. On my timeline, I thought I'd fill the world with laughter. Ooh, I asked the people to change my mind. You're gonna, you're gonna put a clip in there for my my meme song. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> the whole song. People can just take this whole podcast a, and just boom. Like... <laughs> <laughs> I can't do the same thing with the movie. I'm sorry, Jimmy. If you oh, haven't yeah. seen the movie, here's a clip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, here's if a you could just play audio. the trailer, that would be cool. But um, <laughs> uh, will it carry over audio audio, audio of the trailer? That would be good. But um. If you want to see the trailer, body swap. Movie. Yes, there we go. <laughs> I'm actually I was I was trying to play it in the background here, but I think it'll add background noise. So I can't do that. Mm-hmm. Yes, you're, okay. you're unless you hit mute on your on your microphone, it's going to pick up the whole thing, and I'm just going to use that right there. Right. Like that's going to be my audio. Let's use. Let's just put his trailer in there. Two natty lights, please. I got that. This girl. No, you don't. This girl's so high maintenance, so annoying. High maintenance doesn't scare me, baby. I'm a lesbian. How's it going? Girl on girl's my favorite. I have diarrhea. I have diarrhea right now. Your resume without me. Do you have the same name? Except I usually go by CJ. What's the J stand for? Casey Jones. I got it. Even machines must obey the law. I got with the hockey mask. Oh, Friday the 13th. Okay. Where's Casey? Oh, I, I haven't seen him. Him? So you're looking at jacket. You seem a little out of sorts. What is this? The fat guy in the little COVID from Tommy Boy? I'm leaving. How did this happen? Pump the brakes, lady. I don't swap bodies every day. 
Well, I'm a career-minded woman. I can't go to work like this. I'll be you, and you be me, and that's it. This is a nightmare. It's a fluid situation. Oh, if by fluid you mean it's on an IV bag, then yeah, it is. There are so many hands. I know. I knew that too. I mean, not to all the things. Or if by fluid you mean it's an episode of CSI, then yeah, it's a fluid situation. I thought you made a reference. What did you do? What all girls do when guys aren't around. Make out. She's my frenemy. You know what they say about the frenemy of my frenemy is my frenemy. So I have the same name as the guy. No, you have got to learn the difference between your bully mask wearing mania. Man wants to promote his movie. Let's. All <laughs> Hearing your voices bouncing off the moon isn't right. However. <laughs> There is a lot of facts in there. Um, I, I do like a lot of the facts, but I like it more importantly the the what they're trying to get across. Like so, Ed said on an interview that he did with NPR that it's a celebration not about the remoteness of space, but about the connectedness of a human being on the space station who looks down and sees the whole planet in a way that from our perspective, we don't have the opportunity to. And I and I really like that way of kind of summing up what this what this really is about. I mean, the the line where it says you can't make out borders from up here is just a spinning ball within a tiny atmosphere. Like it makes everything and all our silly problems seem so insignificant. And, the, and another really, like, I, I think it's important to kind of highlight the line, too, where he says that this that this was only accomplished, and I'm trying to find the exact line. I'm looking through the lyrics right now, and, of course, I can't find the exact line I'm going for. Um, that you can, that this was only accomplished by, only could be accomplished by 15 people. Oh, right there. Um, what was once was fueled by feel, fear now has 15 nations orbiting together here because really the only way that the space station came together, the only reason that it exists in the succeeded. space race happened was competition, right? It happened at a competition, but the only reason that the, the space station was able to exist is because 15 nations came together and said, we're going to work together to create this, this amazing creation up in space you know different nations made the solar panels versus the acdc that's, units yeah. versus the that's kind of civilization is itself though is uh people fighting uh if people didn't fight to be the strongest we wouldn't be here you know right every animal every ve even the vegetarian ones seem to fight to uh mate and survive so like and then also to collaborate uh, and get us to civilization as we have here and animals working together. So, yeah, I mean, you could definitely deep dive into a lyric like that. I didn't even think of it that way. So that was a good uh, observation. You know, really, like, fear started all this. Like, the competition... The Russians versus the you, Americans, if you don't know, listeners. Right. <laughs> uh, the space race. The space race back they in might the be, They might be too young to remember. The, the, I'm uh, too young to remember, uh, really, honestly. But I knew about yeah. it. Like, I was... Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, but... Um, but, yeah, but then, like, after a certain point, they're like, you know what? This is really kind of silly that we're... <laughs> that we're doing this and we're not working together. Uh, I mean, listen listen to the countries that we have working on this one state station. Russia, Canada, Japan, Brazil, Belgium, Denmark, France, Germany, Italy, Netherlands, Norway, Spain, Sweden, Switzerland, UK. Not more than like 40 years before that, those countries were all at war with each other. In a massive war, a world war, and came together to build this amazing creation that now does research and brings scientific knowledge that we never would have had otherwise. And you get that out of two lines. Like, that's the amazing thing that, that is brought to this song by Chris Hatfield.
Wow, everyone's everyone's quiet. Sorry, I was I was actually button. watching the body swap thriller. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, you? <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> In a world of elections going on, I'm glad to draw you away. No, I appreciate <laughs> that. Thank you. It looks it looks really good. <laughs> oh, well, thank you, thank you. Um, <laughs> we haven't talked much about the music, by the way. Oh, by the way, yeah. So we haven't talked about the music. Um, Aaron, give us a breakdown of the music. Okay, let's break it down. Break, break, break it down. Is Somebody Singing was recorded at 145 beats per minute. I'm not sure exactly how it was recorded. I would think there had to have been a delay in the signal from space. If not, I'm very impressed. Um, I assume there was some kind of recording on Chris's part, and then the video was played back, and Ed and Tyler and the choir performed to that. But I don't know, maybe it actually was live. I'd like to learn more about that. Uh, It was recorded in the key of G major. You have four different sections. You have the verse, which is E minor to D to A minor to C to G. The pre-chorus, which is D to A minor to E minor to D to C to D to A minor to G to D to C. Leading back into the chorus up to G. So you have in the chorus G, D, A minor, C, D, E minor, D, C. And finally, the bridge section is A to D. It's pretty much A, D, A, D, A, D, A, D, using C as a turnaround, which steps back up into D for the final pre-chorus. Uh, there's, we skipped the verse proper, if you will, the last time around. So the structure of the song is verse, which is your A section, pre-chorus, your B, chorus, which is your C, then another verse, A, pre-chorus, B, chorus, C, your bridge, your D section, pre-chorus, B, and the chorus, C, with a tag ending uh, playing the final three chords, G, D, C, uh, several times. So the form or structure is A, B, C, A, B, C, D, B, C. I had assumed that this song had been conceptualized after Chris Hadfield's wonderful cover of David Bowie's Space Oddity, but I think this actually might have been recorded first. I really like the song. I have to admit, as a space nerd, it's hard for me to be impartial, especially since it features Chris Hadfield, who is a legitimately talented musician, in spite of most of his time being taken up, you know, being an astronaut. Uh, It's hard for me not to compare this to Hadfield's Space Oddity performance, and while I like that song more, I really do like this quite a lot. It's catchy and inspirational, and if you ask me, this is the kind of song that should have made up the bulk of the children's album. (laughs) I know, I know, I'm probably asking a lot, but it's not preachy or overly educational. It's more conveying the awe of space travel and scientific progress. I guess that's what I like so much about it. I really wish Carl Sagan could have heard this, because it has that kind of poetic awe towards the beauty of the cosmos that he conveyed so well. On that note, the lyrics actually are evocative of Carl Sagan, as they refer to Earth as that ball of shiny blue, which brings to mind Sagan's pale blue dot. And the whole song overall reminds me of Sagan referring to the surface of the Earth as the shore of the cosmic ocean. And he said, of course, recently we've waded a little way out, and the water seems inviting. Great stuff. The lyrics in this song aren't quite so poetic, but who could compare to Sagan in that aspect? Uh, They convey a sense of longing for home and pride in the multinational effort that made the ISS possible. I think it's a lovely tribute to what the human race can accomplish on those rare occasions when we can set our differences aside and work together. Hadfield's voice is a little thin, uh, but there's something enigmatic and charismatic about it. He blends very well with Ed. The addition of the Wexford Gleek Choir only serves to add to this aura, and if I were 20 years younger and not so in love with space, I would probably have made a snide comment about them cynically pulling on our heartstrings. But what can I say? I love it. Besides, if the Stones can use a children's choir for you can't always get what you want, why not this? The video is great. It's wonderful to see Chris playing and singing in the cupola on the screen next to Ed, Tyler, and the choir. And seeing Chris's guitar and pick float, well, seeing things float in zero-G never gets old. It lacks the bittersweet gravitas and wistful melancholy of Space Oddity, but I've lost most of my cynical impulses to age, as I said, and I have very little negative to say about this. It made me smile, and it will stay in my head for some time, I think. I might even add this to my Best of BNL playlist. I'll have to think on it. 
However, I can't contain my enthusiasm for all things science and space, so I have to give Is Somebody Singing a very solid 4 out of 5 atmospheres. Honestly, musically, I don't have much to say about this. Like I said, it really feels like an Ed-driven song, like you said before, and, and the other guys are kind of in the background adding their stuff in, but you really don't get to hear the guys until you have the selfie cam jam. Right. But I, I love the way that that sounds on there. Like, you can hear them adding things in. Um, I, I think that that's one of the things that's missing off this song is we don't have an album version of it. So all the stuff that Kevin adds in and Tyler and Jim like to add in to kind of fill the space isn't in this song. Yes. Uh, is it stereo? I'm guessing it's stereo. It's on YouTube. Probably. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. I think it's stereo, but I didn't detect any differences in channels, like splitting anything Yeah, it's up. just not going to be, like, studio mastered or anything that's, like, epic, you know, in that way. Mm. I think it's more epic in its, like, uh, scope of what they've pulled off than a uh, typical studio release. Yeah. Which I, I think is a little bit of a shame. I would have liked to see in the studio release of it. It would have been interesting to see what they mm -hmm. would have done with it. Well, it's weird. I saw I like a lyric version that sounded like it might have been a studio version, honestly. I like these little gems, though. I like unreleased things from any artist uh, I follow. Is is something, uh, you know, I'll sometimes look up unreleased of a certain artist, even recent ones, and they'll have, you know, 20 songs. Um they just either singles that in between albums or what have you. So I always like to find a little one off and that didn't get released. Yeah. Officially. So so we were mentioning before numbers. Let's let's do some numbers here. Let's well, first of all, Jimmy, I don't know if you know our system. We rate things from zero to five and anything in between. And do we do halves or Yeah, you yeah, can you do, do halves yeah. and decimals. Any decimals are allowed. Yeah. Time. I'd go 3.5, maybe 4. What's a 4? I don't know. 3.5. Uh, 3.5? Uh, it's solid. Uh, I don't think I'd play it over and over. Like, there's just some songs that I find even recently that are like that for me. Mm -hmm. But I would, I'd li I've listened to it once or twice. Uh, I mean, I've listened to it two or two times, two or three times to, listen to prepare for the podcast and just enjoyed it. It's unique and just, it's an experience to watch the video it's a it's a good youtube video yeah jeff what are we giving what are we going for for a uh a rating by the way i forgot to ask uh, it's gonna be an it's gonna be an atmosphere oh how many atmospheres how many atmospheres it is that makes sense since there's five different types of atmosphere <laughs> five levels so what atmosphere do we the troposphere <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly why I picked it too, because I I knew there were five levels in the atmosphere. I didn't. <laughs> um, it's a lucky guess. So yes, atmospheres. Um, I'm actually um right there with Jimmy. Honestly, I I gave this one a three point four. Um, it's a good song. It's fun. You know, it's it uh, a really really cool for a uh, um you know a nerd who probably we all said at one point maybe we wanted to be an astronaut. And, um, I love space and all that. So it's a really cool song. It's a feel good. I don't, I don't know if it's even the best. I'm in space and I miss my family song that's ever been written. Well, I, I mean, think we <laughs> we have we have two good ones. So uh, that yeah, are classic. yeah. So it's if we're really comparing, I don't know if it's lyrically. I mean, it's not lyrically a BNL song. Um, with with the with the clever puns. And, I do and feel the, like I really feel like if you're, I, I always think of like. Uh, I probably get chastised for this, but I think of ska when I think bare naked ladies, and this feels REM. It's probably not ska. In fact, I probably looked up the actual genre that bare naked ladies is, but um, it's uh, you know like that's sort of not '90s style is what I always think of them. Yeah, uh, and technically, even REM did a better Man in Space song. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure, and we're talking about Jethro Tull, probably done one. Man on the you know. Moon is not a Man in Space song specifically. I it's know it's Andy not. Kaufman. That's it was still, it was a joke. <laughs> and, and it, Man on the Moon is a yeah, great song. It is a great but, song. <laughs> yeah. um, yes, it's about Andy Kaufman. I know. <laughs> <laughs> 
Alex and Alex Chilton by the what's the, what the Big Star is not a space song either. <laughs> <laughs> Major Tom like is the best space song of all time. It it is it is, and I'm Rocket I'm a sucker Man. for this. This is no, nobody remembers this one anymore, but the early '80s song uh, by the uh, German Peter Schilling, the Major Tom coming home. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a one hit wonder, but that's that, that's one of my. Childhood classic. I, mean, I always love that song too. And, and Rocket Man um, is is a classic as well. Like in well, Rocket Man, yeah, come on. Yeah, yeah. Like th- <laughs> there are classics. This. So I saw him. I saw Elton do that song live. That that's that's nostalgia for me. Too. Yeah. So yeah, I mean it's it's a fun song. I don't think I'd put it on my playlist. It wouldn't be one that I would be like. I really want to listen to ISS tonight. <laughs> um, but for what it is, and 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 the uh, the um you know the experience that it is, it's a fun song. But yeah, I can't really go much higher than that 3.4 in that sense. All right. I would say I give it a, a 3.6. Um, I, I think part of that is when my the first thing I ever wanted to be was an astronaut, very much like you said, Jimmy, before. Um, mm-hmm. and, and like seriously considering it, like I, I looked up all the stuff about space camp. I like got myself a, a newspaper job to start collecting money in order to start being able to afford to go to space camp. And everything was online for me to be an astronaut until I found out that you could not be an astronaut, at least at that time, if you had glasses. So mm-hmm. <laughs> that blew out all my chances and destroyed my hopes and dreams for a long time. Uh, but I really, I, the idea of space astronaut was what i wanted to be and and so the song not only is it a hidden gem because it's bnl and there's a joy about this being done live um both in the selfie cam jam but also in the actual live recording of it, it it's a wonderful momentous occasion that bnl got to take part of but i can't say like i want to listen to this all the time at the same time it wasn't like oh my god i gotta listen to this one more time tonight i cannot believe this I really enjoyed listening to it each time. Um, so, th- yeah, I, I would say 3.6 about finds right where it needs to be for me. Right. And I, I agree with you. I would call this a hidden gem. I I mean, I, it was a positive experience being able to, to listen to this the first time and, and watch it. Definitely a hidden gem. But like I said, just I mean, maybe not up there in the, the echelon of the other B&L songs. Yeah. Um, there are a whole bunch of appearances this week. Um, so I have one of Chris Hadfield where he is going to be showing, talking about how the Canadian guitar got up on the space station. Um, he's also talking about how he wanted to sing with a school, but they hadn't figured out how yet. So this was before they figured out how to do it with it. Um, and also the challenging challenges of playing a guitar weightless is really interesting to hear him talk about how he had to reteach himself to play the guitar up in space. There's also, as I mentioned, a Canada Day celebration, but that's just Ed and Chris. Um, but the really cool thing about that is you get to hear, even though Chris's voice is, is a little haggard, and I, I know there's a reason, I don't know what it, it sounds, doesn't sound great in this version, but Chris is singing in Quebecois, which is really wonderful. Like, you get a different version of this song. There's, of course, the excellent version for, for the Selfie Cam Jam, um, I recommend people go out and listen to. I also really encourage people to go out and listen to Chris Hadfield's album this week. It's different than BNL. Um, it, it's very much Canadian folk and country, so but it's different. By the way, I found something this week, and BNL listeners, please help me out with this. I was blown away because in an article of what was happening when this was going on. One of the projects that was put to the side briefly in order to get this done was BNL was actually writing a musical for Broadway based on Animal House. What? The movie. They, they were doing the music for Animal House on Broadway. It was being produced. However, everything I looked up, I could not see that it actually ever got finished or ever was fully brought to the stage. If people know otherwise, if people can give me a song, that's a crime, and that we need to make that happen. Like it, it, it wasn't just like one fluke article. I would say I read about ten different articles that talked about this, how how big wow. this was coming. They were working on it; it was in production. I'm starting a petition. We need to make this thing real. 
Animal House on Broadway by B and L. Yeah, yeah. I I need this in my life. Mm -hmm. Like, yep. how did this? How did this fall through the cracks, people? They did. They they did it with SpongeBob. We can make this happen. <laughs> well, that's the thing. If you could do it with SpongeBob, right, right. Come on. So I, I, I like I want I want to see this. I want it right next door to Steven's play. At the same time, I want them both playing off each other so that they have to have their premieres on the same night, and and, and like we have to see the two of them in houses right next to each other. Mm -hmm. So I can go to one show and then turn around and go to the other show. And maybe a body swap the musical, you know? You know. That, exactly. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I would love to do a play at some point. Being a play. Yeah. <laughs> I always wanted to play Willy Wonka in a play. That'd be cool. Yeah. <laughs> that would be amazing. <laughs> Do a musical. So tell us more about Body Swap. Once again, remind people where they can go to see this. Yes. Uh, go to bodyswapmovie.com. That movie has me, Ella Jordan, Erica Manny, Gunnar Willis, a bunch of upcoming talent that you'll see around and more stuff coming up. Um, uh, I switched places with the career minded businesswoman. I'm a. Uh, the sort of slacker type that uh, it's her worst nightmare that I have to go into work as her and uh, you can go see the trailer at bodyswapmovie.com and maybe buy it I yes. will say I, I actually did slip over and watch the trailer and um, looks really good so like the just in the trailer the lines were, were having Thank me you. laughing yeah I'm definitely I'm definitely gonna buy this I gotta see this well good yeah, so everyone, go out, watch that. I highly in encourage it. In, in this time of COVID, what are you going to do? Watch something? Yeah, there aren't many movies out there. Right, yeah. Are you, are you going to go yeah. watch something that Netflix put together? Or are you going to go watch something that someone put all their energy and time and hands into? It's a, it's a passion project, and they really loved what they put into this movie. Now, yeah, what, I think... Was this film before... I'm, quarantine or was it like was this all done yeah it was filmed at, uh like uh it got to play actually in front of audiences in fall last year and that had its sort of festival run cut short um but uh yeah i was planning on doing one maybe during these uh i think it'll calm down by spring um people it's just not it's just not been that i heard there's only been twenty thousand more deaths this year than last year so maybe the auto wrecks and stuff went down or something, but um, so I don't think I think it's just more of a contagious disease than a that hurts you and makes you sick, but it doesn't seem to be as deadly as we once thought in March and April. So hopefully, I don't know. we'll get back to making movies again and everything else. But I hope so. <laughs> but at least in the meantime, people can go and watch your movie online yeah, and, and pay for it online. You can, there's nothing stopping you from doing listening to podcasts, being on a podcast, and watching the movie. Yeah. <laughs> um, and watching the video for this that we were talking about this week with watching the video for mm -hmm. it, for uh, the song, I had a thought that just keep coming back to me each time. I mean, this was a momentous occasion. People on Earth sing at the same time as the people in space. Like, there's nothing that hasn't been accomplished at this point. Now, I know it's not true, but I just kept having this feeling that it's all been done. Yeah, and also I feel like I feel like I live in the Jetsons, where <laughs> we got everything we wanted and we don't really want it. It's like looking at screens all day, and it's like uh, just sort of living in a simulated world a little bit. Yeah, and like complaining that we have to push too many buttons all day is definitely a Jetsons <laughs> thing. <laughs> my button put my button hurt, uh, pushing finger. Uh, he had to push like five buttons. Your a day. button pushing fingers hurting. Yeah, <laughs> George Judson would always have that joke. So I, I feel like yeah, we've definitely that and getting off this crazy thing. Stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Everything's floating in space. It's not. <laughs> What's down there? What's down on Earth? I guess it's like a wasteland down there now. <laughs> 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 So, yes, come back next week and join us as we discuss the song It's All Been Done. Thank you for joining us this week, Jimmy. <laughs> Thank you, Jimmy. Thank you. Uh, is there Thank anywhere so we can find you, like, um, after we watch the movie on social media or anything? Oh, uh, Ice Beer Milk is on Instagram, my studio's name. I sort of stay away from social media. Okay. I do have that. The movie's the main thing. Okay. 
But uh, yeah, it might be maybe if you listen to a lot of podcasts, it might be on quite a few because I've done about one or two leading up to this, and I got about five lined up or something. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna be on. I'm gonna be uh, polluting the airwaves very soon. <laughs> nothing wrong with that. Nope. That's what you do. That's what you do when you got a movie. I get well, exactly. And if you get something that you put all your time and effort into, mm-hmm. and you really love it, like get out there and tell people about it. Get people to want to see this thing that you love so much that you made happen. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. Yes, yeah, thank you thanks, for joining Tim. us. Thanks, that was fun. Don't forget, no regrets, except maybe one. Jeff, I I saw your little. Tracy, I cannot believe you made that joke. <laughs> yeah, I saw it coming. I saw it coming. I mean, did you have a did you have a better one? <laughs> no, no, that was <laughs> that's your job, not mine. <laughs> I mean, at a certain point, you you can only tell me so many puns, and then it's all been done. It, then it's all been done, right? Yeah, it's all been done. <laughs> was that better? <laughs> To celebrate joining Pantheon Podcasts, Rock Camp, the podcast, the official podcast of Rock and Roll Fantasy Camp, is giving away a guitar signed by Mike Portnoy of Dream Theater, Marty Friedman, formerly of Megadeth, and legendary shredder Zach Wilde, plus our rock star counselors like Vinnie Apice, Monty Pittman, and more. To enter to win, simply follow, rate, and review our podcast on your preferred platform, and that's all you have to do. For more information, go to rockcamp.com forward slash podcast.